Hello, welcome. Welcome to our Sun Training 101. Welcome. Um, before we get started, we just may, want to make sure you have the best experience today. So please connect your computer, make sure that you have plenty of power. It's not going to run out. Um, close any necessary windows on your computer. That'll just make things go faster. Use the chat. We really encourage you to use the chat for your questions. This is very engaging and informal. Um, so although we have a formal agenda, um, if you have a question at any time, please put it in the in the chat. Um, closed captions will be available. Um, so that's our new feature. We're excited. So welcome. Please introduce yourself and let us know what hospital you are from. Uh, make sure again and to put panelists and attendees. We want everybody to be able to see your your responses and your questions because whatever you ask, somebody probably already is thinking that in their head. So we're gonna start in just a few minutes. We have action packed today. We like to give lots of lots of information. Hey, Stephanie from Adventist Health. Rachel Moore from San Francisco General. Hello, welcome. Give a few more minutes for people to show up. Clarissa from San Gregorio, hello. All right, we're just, we have everybody. Melanie OC Global, Azzy, hello Azzy. Bofel from Orange County Global, hello. I knew that that name looks familiar. Elvia, Veronica, hello. Trish, Sophia, hi Sophia down in Long Beach. Raj from Solano County, hello. Troy St. Joseph's, welcome. Yeah, I, I'm always excited because I'm in Southern California and there's a lot of Northern California um, attendees. So it's always nice to, to have some neighbors here with us. Okay. And we have Alexander Vargas, Marianne, welcome. Welcome back, Marianne. Um, Jake Miller. Okay, I think everybody's here. I think we should get started. All right, well, welcome to our Sun Training 101. Um, this is starting treatment. And for our existing sons, this may be a refresher, um, but we're trying to get everybody on the same page. Some of our newer sons have not even started seeing patients yet. So this is kind of a, a refresher for our existing sons and, and maybe new information for our newer sons. But either way, we hope that you gain some knowledge um, from all of our trainings. Okay, so what's going on today? We're gonna have some inspiration. We're gonna identify patients and screening tools with Dr. Snyder, um, who was here last, last session. Um, and you guys were really, um, had so much great questions for her. So she is back. Um, we'll, she'll also go over symptoms of opioid withdrawal. And then we're going to do some sun roll and starting treatment. We're going to see some suns in action. What does it look like putting it all together? And I'm going to discuss documentation, that last piece. So first of all, we want to show a video um, for inspiration. Grammarly can help you write quickly and confidently, so you never have this is to me. slow down at work. Stay on top of emails, documents, and more without having to stay put. Whether you're working on your computer. Okay. Don't know what happened. It was my 16th birthday. I got a brand new race board. I was excited to use it. The race got canceled because it was raining at the top of the mountain. And conditions were just terrible, so we decided, you know, we're just heading to... It was my 16th birthday. I got a brand new race board. I was excited to use it. The race got canceled because it was raining at the top of the mountain. And conditions were...
for some reason it's not working today. Um, hopefully maybe at the end we can go through it. It's just cutting off. I'm not sure what's going on, but we're gonna move on um, rather than, than be stuck there. So our objectives today is to describe our screening tools for SUD, identify strategies for identifying potential patients, describe the role of the SEM with patient and family members, verbalize the critical concepts of hope, recovery, and wellness, effectively use motivational interviewing techniques, describe elements of an action plan, describe de-escalation techniques for patients, and describe the differences in the electronic and paper charting. Um, now, I'm excited to introduce Dr. Snyder. She is back. She was last, um, our last session, she talked about our medication-assisted treatment. Today, she's going to be um, telling us about how to identify patients and screening tools. Hannah, Dr. Snyder, practices primary care and addiction medicine at Zuckerberg San Francisco San Francisco General Hospital. She's a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. And we're always excited to have you here, Dr. Snyder. Thanks so much. I am always, I was just talking before the call about how excited I get every time I get to come to one of these sun calls and I get to hear all the amazing work that you guys are doing. Um, so thank you. And I can't wait to hear more about it during this session. Um, Let's go to the next slide. So I'm hoping to kind of dive into a lot of the details today on how you actually find patients, which seems like it should be an easy thing to do, but I think we are all learning is actually pretty complicated, right? Um, historically in emergency departments and hospitals, we have not done a good job of making patients feel welcome in talking about their substance use. There's a lot of historical stigma. And so, we really need to kind of change the environment to reduce that stigma so that patients self-disclose, but we also need to do a lot of work to actively outreach to patients and try to find them, even if they don't feel comfortable right off the bat telling us the details of their substance use. Um, so I'm hoping we can use the chat and sort of like make this a dynamic discussion today. I'd love to hear kind of practices in the chat that you all use um, for, uh, for finding patients in the emergency department, in the hospital, um, how, how do you find them? How, do you hear from your clinicians? Do you, you use the track board? Do you um, have a built-in screening question? What does that look like? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a couple different options that we've found work well. And I think for a lot of folks, this actually has to be a multifaceted approach, right? You need to do all of these different approaches to try to catch as many patients as you possibly can um, to welcome them into your care. So first I'll start by talking a little bit about ED focused ones. Um, I, I think a lot of folks use the track board and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that momentarily. Please also let me know in the chat if, if the track board is something that you haven't been able to access. I think that's a good thing for us to be able to problem solve. So every emergency department or most emergency departments have these track boards, right? That kind of list all the patients that are in there at any given moment, what their chief complaint is, their age and key demographics. And, Scanning those track boards can be something that a lot of substance use navigators use. It looks like a lot of you guys do use the track board. And I'd love to hear when you're scanning the track board, what are you looking for? Like what are the key diagnoses or chief complaints that make you think that a person might be there um, and might have a substance use disorder? Um, some hospitals, yes, so, okay, overdose, yes, for sure. Um, withdrawal, yes, alcohol, abscess, I like that. So like. Um, often folks who are, uh, who are people who inject drugs might have increased rates of abscesses. We can look for that. Cellulitis, similarly. Yeah, a lot of times if somebody's coming in with like agitation or suicidality or hallucinations or things like that, that might be a marker of a substance use disorder. Palpitations might be a marker. Yeah, abdominal pain and vomiting. We're going to talk about this a lot when we're talking about alcohol or, pardon me, opioid withdrawal symptoms. Um, but, but that can be a really classic presentation. Um, so using the track board is one key part of this. Some hospitals do um, screening questions. I'd also like to hear if, if that's something that your hospitals do. Do you have something like a standardized screening question that triage does? Not everyone does. Um, often we find that they're not always super helpful because many patients might not disclose. Um, but some hospitals have started to implement a screening question at triage 
that can help patients out. So here's one example is how many times in the last 12 months have you used an illegal drug or a prescription medication for non-medical reasons? That's a mouthful. Um, but it's one of the standardized validated screening questions. I think if I were to use something like this, which we actually do in my hospital, my dream would be you would ask the person this question, have you used an illegal drug or a prescription medication for non-medical reasons? And then you would say, the reason I'm asking this is because we have treatment to offer. We have a substance use navigator who can talk to you and meet with you so that patients know why they're disclosing and they feel comfortable sharing that information. Um, some of you guys are putting in there that you do um, referral, get referrals from your social workers, from your nurses, from your docs. I think that's awesome. So like working really closely together with your provider team, making sure that they know about you um, and that they know that, that you should be called whenever there's a patient with a substance use disorder or when you're around. And that if you're not around, that that's somebody you want to be able to follow up with, right? And then the last thing is, this is more on the inpatient team, but also some hospitals have a roving team that rounds um, kind of going on daily rounds or going to the daily scheduled huddles can be really helpful. Just kind of like putting yourself in there and saying like, okay, as they're running the list of the patients, is there anyone there that you would like the substance use navigator to see? Um, next slide, please. Sorry, I forgot I don't have controls. So, and this is one other thing that we like to suggest that a lot of hospitals do. Um, this is a sign that you can post in your ER, in your waiting room, in your labor and delivery triage, um, in your inpatient units that is actually supposed to be patient facing and says, hey, you need help with pain pills or heroin? Ask us about trying buprenorphine. You can have a really similar sign that says you need help with any substance use. Ask to meet with one of our substance use navigators today. Something that, to tell the patients that it's okay, this is a safe space to identify that I have a substance use disorder and that I'd like help. Um, because otherwise folks, as I spoke about before, just feel kind of squeamish. Like, why would I tell you my business? Why would I tell you that I use drugs if all I'm gonna get out of it is stigma? So we want them to know upfront that the reason we're asking these questions is because we are here to support you and that this is an environment that's really oriented around harm reduction and really oriented around treatment initiation. Next slide. Um, this is a picture of an ED track board. Um, I noticed in the chat that some of you have access to this, not all of you do. Often, at the very least, they're sort of like posted on TVs in all the different room or all the different um, main pod areas of an emergency department. Sometimes you can get your EHR to be set up with, with ED track board access. And I think that would be really awesome. I think it's a, a really helpful thing to do for you to be able to scan the track board. And then for all the diagnoses that folks were listing, so abscess, stomach pain, anxiety, um, hallucinations, things like that, you just click into those patients and see like, maybe this is a person that I wanna screen and do a point check even if they didn't identify substance use disorder as the reason they were coming in, it can't hurt to go ask those patients and check in and see what they need. We often find that at the beginning of a program, so when a new substance use navigator starts, we need to do a lot of this active outreach um, and to help patients feel welcome. And then over time, sometimes the word gets out and patients will feel more comfortable identifying because they know that your hospital is a safe place. Um, okay, next slide. So, there's this model that's called ESPERT, Screening, Brief Intervention, and Referral to Treatment. I like to call it ESBIT because, uh, because I think it should be screening, brief intervention, and then just treatment. Um, and I think that's really what the California Bridge programs are about and what all of your hospitals are really working to do. So in terms of screening, we talked about there are structured screening questions, but also screening can look like reaching out to your providers and having them refer. It can look like um, scanning the track board. It can look like active outreach to patient populations. Those are all ways to screen and identify a group of people who might benefit from the intervention of a substance use navigator, right? Then you as the substance use navigator go into the room with the patient, check in and do what's called a brief intervention. So that's maybe you do some motivational interviewing. You check in and see what the patient is interested in doing that today. Um, say, do you want harm reduction supplies? Are you interested in starting a medication? Do you want to be linked to follow up? All those questions. And then just kind of checking in and providing that motivational interviewing to build a patient up in whatever plan they, they think is in line with their goals. And then treatment or referral to treatment. So because you have a California Bridge program in your hospital, you're able actually to initiate treatment then and there, right? You're able to say, here, let's get you a, a box of naloxone, or here, let's um, get you started on buprenorphine, or here, let's get you started on naltrexone. All those things should be things that we should be able to offer to our patients. 
And then we're referring and linking them to ongoing follow-up care. And that's really kind of the heart of what you guys do as the substance use navigators. So that's sort of the expert model. And you'll hear, hear about this more in our other trainings as well. Um, if you go to the next slide, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today, because we got a, a lot of questions about it in the chat last time, was um, uh, was symptoms of opioid withdrawal and the cows score. Can you all put in the chat, are cows tracked at your hospital? Is this something that you use in your practice? And we'll talk about it a little here. If you go to the next slide. Um, sorry, Sherry, next slide. Um, so the cow score is a structured way to check if somebody has opioid withdrawal. We'll talk about a few different ways to use this. And I'll say it's not mandatory. Not every hospital has decided to implement it. There are plenty of cases where somebody's in clear opioid withdrawal. They say like, they come in, they say, I use heroin. I haven't used heroin for a day. I feel really dope sick and I feel like I'm in bad withdrawal right now. Like that is a clear case, particularly if somebody like looks uncomfortable and has objective signs where you might not need to do a cow score. But a lot of providers, nurses, substance use navigators, and others will use a cow score when it's not totally clear if a person is in opioid withdrawal, and therefore it's not totally clear yet if it's time to start the buprenorphine. Um, so here are some of the symptoms of opioid withdrawal that we talk about. And again, let's also use the chat to kind of chime in with other things. What, what are the most common symptoms of opioid withdrawal that, that patients tell you about? When the person says they're dope sick, like what are they feeling? What are they endorsing to you? Here's some of the things that I think about that, that do come out in the cow score. Um, tachycardia, so a rapid heartbeat, diaphoresis, which is like sweating, restlessness, agitation, dilated pupils. So right, like big expanded pupils. This is one of the key hallmarks of opioid withdrawal. Um, runny nose, tears. I'm like translating all the medical words in real time here. Um, although I know you guys know most of these. Um, vomiting, diarrhea, and then goosebumps. Right? So all of these things are objective things where I can look at you and I can see evidence that you are in opioid withdrawal. If somebody tells me that they're in opioid withdrawal and I see one of these objective symptoms, I feel like I'm good to go. It's time, like you're sick enough that buprenorphine can be initiated. I love that when I asked about symptoms of opioid withdrawal, everybody's anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. This is the most common thing that, um, that people come in with. And this is often one of the earliest symptoms of opioid withdrawal. You feel anxious, you feel restless, and then it over time increases and increases to where you get to these more objective uh, symptoms and more severe stomach symptoms as well. If you go to the next slide, we can talk about those other subjective um, uh, symptoms as well. So these are like the nausea, the stomach cramps, right? We talked about how this can be a common chief complaint. Body aches, aches and pains all over. And that's a really common chief complaint that we hear when someone's in opioid withdrawal. Feeling hot and cold and stuffy nose. So these are all things that a person might tell you or might come in with as a chief complaint when actually they're in opioid withdrawal. And this is why it's really important to scan that track board. If you're seeing things like this, it could be that somebody has a stuffy nose and muscle aches for other reasons, but it could be that that's a good person to check in with and see if they have an opioid use disorder um, and if they, they might want help with it. Often folks are not gonna on first pass tell you why they feel sick because they're waiting to see if they think they'll, they'll face stigma when they talk to you. Um, Marla, I love it. So they're like hunched over monosyllabic answers. They look like they feel bad. Yeah, this is a really, really uncomfortable state of being like we talked about in the last session. Um, so if you go to the next slide, I do wanna say that Withdrawal can look like a lot of other stuff. And so sometimes we have a California Bridge Hospital, and I know this has happened at my own, where we're really excited about giving buprenorphine and we're really excited about treating opioid withdrawal. And we have a patient who tells us that they use opioids and that they feel sick and it feels sort of like withdrawal. But if I treat someone with buprenorphine and they don't get better, those symptoms that we were listing out didn't get better, then you know it could be we haven't given them enough, and that's common, but it also could be that there's something else going on. It could be that we have an underlying medical condition that we haven't identified that we need to treat. So for you as a substance use navigator, you, know, you don't need to make the diagnosis of the medical condition, but you can feel and should feel comfortable going to the nurses and going to the doctors and being like, this guy isn't getting better the way I would expect. You know, we gave him an eight milligram dose and now he's all the way up to 24 milligrams of buprenorphine, and he's still feeling aches and pains and really sick. 
that tells us that it's possible that there's something else going on. Maybe they got food poisoning. Maybe they have the flu. Maybe they have COVID. Maybe they have um, alcoholic pancreatitis. There's a lot of different things going on that could um, cause these similar symptoms. And if we're not seeing get better with buprenorphine, then I think we need to always like stop, step back and look at our differential diagnosis and make sure there's nothing else going on there. You go to the next slide. Um, so you guys were mentioning in the chat kind of different ways that the cows has been implemented. And I'll say, as with all things, California Bridge and all the times that we talk, there's a lot of variability in what this can look like. So in most hospitals, the cows is something that is owned by one of the licensed providers. So a nurse or NPs or PAs or MDs or medical assistants, somebody who goes through like a, a checklist cows and puts a cow's score into the EHR, essentially in a standing way in a way similar to what we do with a CWA protocol for alcohol withdrawal. But in some hospitals, the substance use navigator does really own this. And it can be really useful for you guys to use the cows as a tool for yourself and your learning and your training to kind of check off like which symptoms of a cow of, on the cow scale is this patient exhibiting? Do I feel like this is a classic set of opioid withdrawal symptoms? And that can be really helpful for our teaching. Um, when you see a cow score of at least eight, that's usually high enough to make us feel comfortable starting buprenorphine. For those of you who were here last time, we talked about a couple exceptions to that, like patients who are on methadone or on really high doses of fentanyl, you might want to wait longer. Um, but in most cases, eight is high enough. And I think this last question that I put on here is, is really important because I can do all the cow scoring I want and I can look at all the checklists I want. But really the most helpful tool for me is to ask a patient, like, does this feel like your normal withdrawal? Uh, do you feel like you're dope sick? And if the answer is yes, then the patient knows their body and they're probably in pretty significant withdrawal and we can probably go based on that. At the same time, if a patient says, no, this doesn't feel like withdrawal, then we should listen to that because folks know what their withdrawal feels like. And then we need to look at other medical conditions that could be causing some of their symptoms. Yeah, thanks Dennis for putting that in the chat. So MD Calc, Med Calc, there's a few different things out there where you can download an app or you can use a web browser and just kind of punch in the patient's symptoms and come up with a cow score. All right, I'll have us go to our next slide then. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna turn it over to the Sun team. I think we've been answering most of these questions as we go, but we can take some additional ones at the end of the session. So please keep putting questions and thoughts in the chat. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Snyder. You always give us a a better just uh, perception of, of what's going on and, and thank you. We really appreciate your time. So going further, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we're um, referring patients, how we want to know how you're referring patients. So we're going to take a poll. We want you to answer the poll as quickly as possible. It's going to state, um, how do you get patient referrals, either by computer order, by phone call, by paper, or other. I don't know what other could be, but it could be other. So that's why we put it there. If you can please um, fill out the poll. Again, we just kind of want to take an inventory on how you're getting your referrals. Um, this session is about referrals and we want to make sure you're getting them and how you're, you are getting them. Um, what's really important with referrals is that's how you can log and keep track of all the patients you're seeing. And we talked real briefly before about um, about how you're keeping track. And it doesn't have to be something elaborate. Um, you may get a phone call from a pa outside patient, not even a nurse or a doctor. Um, and are you logging that? It's very important that you do log your calls on whatever system you have, does not have to be formal. It could be something just as an Excel spreadsheet with the name, the phone number, and you know somebody called for references. So again, we just want you to take the poll and we want to know these things, but definitely um, anybody you talk to, you should be keeping a record of. So we got the results of our poll. How do you get patient referrals? Um, looks like 52% say computer order, 72% say a phone call, 22% um, are still on paper, and other. Okay, we will type in the chat. We want to know what the other is. Like I said, we don't know what that is. Um, so 
you know, we would really, really like to know a dispatch hotline from DHCS. Wow. Okay. We don't have that. Um, old fashioned pager. Wow. I didn't know they still made those. <laughs> that, that's interesting, Jill. Um, that's a, a, a dinosaur kind of in technology. So I'm glad that your hospital is keeping up with that. I loved pager. That was the easiest. Um, verbal. Okay. Verbal. Looks like, um, you know, there's lots of emails. Okay. All right. After hours, okay, I'm added to the treatment team and then I run a report every morning. That's another thing is, do you have a process, you guys, of um, how people are, what to do after hours? You need a, a process for logging your patients. And then another process, definitely, what do you do after hours or on the weekends, right? Um, we just wanna make sure if you do not have those processes, please look in your Sun Toolkit and they will definitely give you some guidance or type in the chat. We can definitely um, definitely give you some, some pointers on how to do that, right? Um, so again, make sure, you know, whether your referrals are computer entry or phone calls, um, emails, we just want to make sure that you have a process. That is what's most important. It has to be what works at your hospital and what might work at somebody's hospital may not work at yours. So again, there's nothing's right here. It's all different types and we just wanted to know. Um, and again, after hours, what do you do? Um, we just make sure that you have an after hour program and that everybody that gives you referrals knows what to do. Um, do you have that on your messages? You know, if some somebody's calling you, that you're not there on the weekend and you'll return that, um, you'll talk, call them back um, on the next business day. Those are all very, very important. So now we're going to skip to, moving ahead, a scenario. So we have our Sun Mentors, um, Tommy Trevino. He's our Sun Mentor for Region Sutter and UC System. And he's gonna play a father trying to get his help for his son. And this is a scenario we come across quite a lot as sons. Um, Christian is gonna play the son. Um, he is, Christian is the son mentor for the Bay Area. If you guys don't know him, he's our, our, our uh, son mentor here in the Bay Area, plays role of the father. Uh, he's gonna play the son and kind of direct the dad on what to do. Morning, everyone. It's Christian here. Um, and then Tommy is, I guess, right below me in the little box right below me. Yeah. So, um, so this is a scenario that you may not interact with um, in your first kind of starting days as a, as a substance use navigator. But as you gain more experience and as people get to know who you are and the fact that there's a bridge program in your hospital and really the community gets to know who you are, um, you will start to encounter this. Um, and so Tommy and I are gonna play out a scenario of um, a family member who's really, they're, they're concerned and they're really seeking some help, um, not for themselves, but um, for someone else. And, and, and again, I, I won't give away how, how I'm going to approach this, but, um, try and try and think of how you would really handle the situation because it will happen. It ha it's, it, and it's more common than you think. So, um, I'll let Tommy start. Hello, my name is Tommy. Uh, looking for a counselor in the hospital. I got a number from a local clinic in the area. Who am I speaking to? Hi, Tommy. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm the substance use navigator here at uh, Highland Hospital in Oakland. Uh, how can I help you? Well, I got my son. He's uh, been using heroin and he's been in your hospital before and, and uh, you guys had him and you guys let him go. I don't understand it. I, I, he went, I loaned him $1,500 this week and he used it all up. I don't know what's going on. He has a girlfriend. The only thing they want to do is just, just use heroin and I, I don't know how to help him. It's just like, and I was told that you, that you can help this you can help my son. I'm worried that he's going to die. And uh, I just don't know what to do. I, I've tried everything. And I'm just like, 
at the end, I'm losing my mind. I just don't know what to do with this guy. Well, first off, sir, you know, thanks for reaching out. Um, I know this is a, you know, a difficult situation. Um, is your son with you right now? No, he's not. He's in his car. He's homeless, living somewhere. I don't know. He's living in a car that the windows are all bashed out. And I just know, I'm just waiting for a phone call saying that he's going to be dead. I, I don't know where he's at. He's out in the street somewhere. Okay. Um, and and what, when was the last time, last time you saw him physically? I haven't seen him in about a month, but I, I get a call like every two days asking for money. So I'm, I'm assuming he's going to be calling me here any day for some more money. Uh, okay. Um, well, the first thing is, um, one, I'd like to reach out to him because ultimately I think he's the person that we're trying to help. Um, so when, when you next uh, s speak to him, I'd like you to, you know, give him our, our number, tell him he can show up here. You can give him my name and, and we're going to really try and help him. Um, ultimately though, you know, I know your concern and I know, you know, this is a really challenging time for you and you're trying to help your son. Um, so he can just show up at the hospital anytime? Is that yeah, absolutely. Just we're, ask we're, for who? Just he, ask can for ask for, he can ask for myself. He can, he can show up at 2 a.m. The, oh, the great, emergency great. department is open 24 seven and we're totally here to help everyone. Um, but ultimately, you know, this is something that he needs to, he needs to do on his own. You know, I, I don't, we cannot force anyone into care. We are here simply to offer everyone care. And he doesn't and, have any money. He doesn't have any insurance. He doesn't have anything. That, that, that going to be a problem? No, not, not at all. We're again, we as the patient navigators here, that, that is what we do. We are here to offer people all the care that they want and, and ultimately let them make their decisions, you know, with regards to their medical care, as long as it's in a safe way. Should I force them in? Should I drag them in or no. what are you saying? Well, well, what I'm, what I'm saying, sir, is that ultimately forcing someone into care, if they're not ready, they probably won't engage in care. Um, and, and I know it's, it's really hard for you as a father who's tried to support him and, you know, you've given him money and, and there's a lot of mistrust and whatnot that's going on there, but, but really we can only offer care to people who really just show up and present, you know, as, as much as I would, as much as I would like to go out and reach out to him, um, ultimately, as long as you just present him with the option that we're here to help, we will be here to help. And, you know, I, I again, I, I'm really, really um, glad you called. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your help. And, and uh, next time he calls, I'll give him the number and maybe I can take him down there, talk to him. Yeah. Down there. Thank you so much. Right. You're, you're very welcome, Tommy. Thank you, guys. I think let's give a hand. I, I wish you could hear our, our applaud. That was awesome. I think that was so realistic. What do you guys think? What do my sons think out there? I think that was an excellent um, just our show of our sons in action. This is what you're dealing with um, on a daily basis. So we wanted just to make sure that you guys seen what it is that we are actually doing. So again, thank you. Do you guys have any questions for Christian and Tommy? I think they did a great job. That is awesome. So next we're going to go to scenario two. And um, this next scenario, again, it, you may come across it soon. You may come across it later. Um, this is going to be with our Sun Mentors. LaToya is from our Dignity LA region, Sun Mentor, and Chaya, which is our Central Valley, Central Coast, South Bay Sun Mentor. Now, the scenario is LaToya will be playing a patient going through a doll, and she's acting out. She does not feel good, and basically, um, she's not really, uh, she's resistant to care. And the nurse is going to call Chaya because she's done everything and nobody will, um, nobody's getting through to, to LaToya, but she knows she needs help. Um, Chaya is going to play the role of the son and she's going to use de-escalation and motivational inter interviewing to support the patient with a plan of action, okay? Um, and we don't know what the plan of action, what they have planned for us. So um, you guys go ahead. Hi, Latoya. 
How are you feeling? I don't want to sit down. Nobody's okay. going to poke me or touch me. Okay, that's okay. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. Okay. Um, my name is Chaya. Um, I'm here to see if I can help you with anything, like anything at all. Um, I, and I just want to know how you're feeling right now. Why is the nurse just standing there looking at me? Do they think I'm going to do something? No, um, I'm not a medical staff. So having someone medical here is good support, just in case anything happens. Is that okay too? Or are you, do you want to just be me and you? I, I prefer just me and you. Okay. I will tell the nurse to go away. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. So can you tell me what's going on? Well, I use heroin um, and I'm already getting sick. Okay. So a friend of mine said that you guys do help here um, to just come in and ask for the bridge program. But I came in and the nurse wants to um, do, she said something about labs and taking my piss. And you know what? I'm not here for that. I didn't come to see the doctor. I came to, to do the bridge program and to get treatment for, for my drug use. I mean, what is all this about? Okay, well, we just, um, let me, can I ask you some questions about your drug use then? What do you want to know? I'm open When was the last time you used? Well, I mean, I didn't use a lot. I didn't use what I, what I normally do. But when was the last time you used? How long ago was that? Yesterday? This morning? Um, I used this morning. Okay. Um, how do you normally use? I, I normally inject it. Okay. Um, and how often, how long do you have to wait until you start feeling sick? I mean, usually when, when I use my normal amount, I can go like, I don't know, four to six hours. And then I have to use again and I start getting sick. Um, but I didn't use my usual amount today. You know, that way I was at least a little bit sick when I came in here. So I'm already getting sick. Okay. All right. Um, what do you know about treatment? You were asking about the bridge program. So um, have you ever gotten treatment for heroin use before? Well, I mean, years ago I did methadone, but I'm not looking for that crap anymore. I don't, I mean, it works for some people, but it's not for me. And I saw my friend did really good with Suboxone. So that's what I was looking for. Okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, when was the last time you had methadone? It's been years. Okay. Um, if the boxing is an option for you today, are you willing to start it? Well, what do I have to do? You just have to be on the Because I'm not going to have the nurse poke me again or do any of that. Okay, they won't poke you. <laughs> okay. Um, I just have to have the doctor come and check, look at you to see if you're like in withdrawal. He has to go off the scale. And if, as long as you're in withdrawal, we can give you the medication because if you're not in withdrawal yet and we give you the Suboxone, you will go into withdrawal. Okay, is that okay? Well, I don't wanna go into more withdrawals than I am now, um, but I also don't wanna see the doctor, not after the way everybody has been treating me today. Okay, uh, well, I cannot order you the medication. A doctor has to order it for you. And then the nurse has to be the one that gives it to you. Okay. okay. So since it's only been like a couple hours since I last used, um, would I be able to start it now if I saw the doctor? Um, that really depends on the doctor. If you cannot start it like right now today, we can also give you a prescription to go home to start it. And that we could discuss more uh, after the doctor sees you. Um, do you give me the prescription physically? Cause I don't have any insurance right now. Um, so we have a way to pay for it as long as uh, you're willing to comply. Okay. And um, with your insurance situation, is it possible for me to also help you with that? I mean, I used to have Medi-Cal before, before I was locked up, but it got suspended when I was locked up. Okay. Is it okay? If I, I don't, have... I don't know if I'm ready today. I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think today's a good day. I'm already, 
upset and you know just the nurse there the way she's giving me the side eye and everything i mean you're really nice and i appreciate you taking the time to talk to me but can i come back another day yes definitely and you can have my number i'm gonna give you my pamphlet with my name and my card on it call me anytime you're ready okay okay can i also offer you something what is it can, can i give you a narcan kit Yes. Do you, do you know what it is? No. What okay. is it? So Narcan is used for um, opiate overdose. It helps reverse and saves the life. It looks like this. Oh, can you see it? And I'm okay. gonna give you a box and I'm gonna show you how to use it. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. You can use it on yourself or you can use it to save somebody else's life when you do encounter somebody who may possibly overdose from yeah. um, opiate use. Okay, so I just carry this around with me then? Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And like I said, please call me whenever you come back when you're ready, okay? All right, thank you very much, Chai. You're really nice, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Wow, thank you guys again, hands off. You know, these are really, really true scenarios. Our sons have lived this life and gone through it. And I think um, these are some great role models and some great sun in action um, vignettes. So I do really want you just to take that, um, you know, all of the words, the key terms, how they met the patient where they're at. We're not there to make them do anything. And I think that was great with what Chaya and Latoya um, role played. That was excellent. So, um, yeah, everybody's saying thank you. Nicely done. I like to see this in action because I know you guys are working hard. So next up to kind of close the loop is charting. What do we do? What do we do to, um, to close this loop? We need to document. So some of us um, are documenting in, in Epic, Cerner, computer charting. Some of us are doing paper patient intake forms and we're gonna put a patient paper uh, intake form. It's right there in the chat. Um, so if you need some guidance on how to do that interview, um, that, that is a great resource. And also follow-up calls. Do you chart your follow-up calls after the patient left if you're following up in three days or seven days, whatever you have decided? Um, very, very important again. And each ED visit, is it a separate consult? Are you charting that? Um, so what does a son need to chart? Okay, well, we want you to chart whatever the patient states. I think that's really the best way to explain something is I feel like crap and my wife kicked me out of the house. Put it in quotation. That's what the patient states. Um, they also say, patient states may say, I am tired. Just let me sleep and leave me alone. That's fine too. It's not, it's whatever they state, okay? Um, you might state from Latoya and Chaya's role play is um, the patient stated she doesn't want to be, um, she doesn't want the nurse to look at her, right? She doesn't want the nurse in the room. Chart those things. Those are really important because it's what the patient states. It's their, their feelings. Um, do not chart. Please do not chart your opinion, your disagreements, okay, with staff. Maybe the nurse, you know, said something to you and got you upset. Always make sure it's an objective statement, okay? There, um, most hospitals, most organizations have their own grievance forms or, um, you know, a risk paper that you need to fill out, right? Um, an I-risk is what we call it at some hospitals. So those are, those are go on a different channel. This is for a patient chart to read, okay? Re always remember that you, the patient may read this. Um, and do not chart abbreviations. Sometimes, you know, you know the abbreviation, but unless it's in medically accepted, write it out or write how you know it. Might not be a medical term, that is fine. That is okay because that's what truly was there. Um, and also, if you do make narrative notes, some of you do, there's multiple formats. There's the DAR, there's the SOAP format. Um, we're going to real quickly go over just the DAR, but there's many. And please consult with your, um, your supervisor. Um, one thing is always be objective. Document the type of visit, whether it's a phone call, okay, whether it's a bedside, 
all right? Those are different types of visits and you need to put those down. And remember, if you did not charge it, it never happened. So what about that phone call that Christian got? What would you guys do with that? Um, would you log it? Would you chart it where? Where would you chart it? Okay, um, that's why it's really important that you have a process because when your supervisors ask, what have you been doing? Well, I got five calls today. You might not get their names, right? You might only get a first name. You might only want to use initials, okay? That is fine. Just remember, chart something down, you know, in a log, spoke with this father of a heroin addict who's living on the street for, sorry, um, for you might a patient who uses heroin, sorry. Um, but definitely there will be no MRN. Somebody says, if you don't have an MRN, sometimes you, they might not even be a patient, okay? Just make note that the patient you know, uses heroin, referred father to tell son to come in. And you might wanna put down how long that took. That maybe took 10 minutes, okay? Some patients, um, may call the, the mothers and fathers and may really talk to you for an hour, write the amount of time, 60 minutes, okay? Um, keep a log, very, very important. You're not gonna remember all of the patients that you see. So this is the data action response. This is just a brief example. You don't have to use this, but the data, what's going on, right? I have not used, um, oops, sorry. I have not used opioids for eight hours and I'm starting to have withdrawal. And that's in parentheses, right? The action, the son sat with patient at bedside, discussed MAT with buprenorphine for 20 minutes, okay? Because when you're charting, you know, this is your action of what you've done and how much time, okay? Behind that 20 minutes might be another 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after, okay? Um, so remember, chart how much time and response. You know, I will accept naloxone harm reduction kit and we'll call the son in three days, okay? That's what the patient says. So again, this is just a very simple, very simple way of charting. Um, doesn't have to be elaborate. You don't have to write. I think people are under the misconception that they have to write a lot. No, we just want very simple, um, very simple charting, you know, exactly what you did. And Tommy's putting in the chat, always um, put in a phone encounter if you talk with them over the phone, right? Um, so some key takeaways today to wrap all of this up. I know there was a lot of information going on. Um, you guys, we talked about all the different tools to identify patients. Involving the patient and family is vital. I don't need to tell you guys, you, you are doing this every day and we do have to have the whole patient together, right? Um, promoting hope, recovery and wellness. You know, you guys know this, that's what you do on a daily basis is promote hope, recovery and wellness. Um, you've, we've demonstrated that motivational interviewing because it really does improve communication and trust. And you witnessed both Christian and Chaya deescalating a challenging situation. They stayed true to who they were and that's to help, right? Regardless, um, making an action plan um, will help support the patient. You know, the plan was not, you know, Latoya was not gonna take accept treatment today, but you know what the action plan she gave her an Arcan and she can come back. And that is an action plan. Might not be the best, not what we want, right? But that was an action plan between Chaya and Latoya. And that's, that's okay. Um, and documentation, document, document, document. You guys can't even explain that more. The other thing is we just wanted to remind everybody who the bridge team is. It takes a team to put this on together. So again, thanks everybody, our clinical team, Dr. Snyder, for coming and talking to us. We so appreciate you. And she is still here if you want to type in the chat any questions for her. Also, um, our program staff, Francesca, Caroline, Aria, they, our comms team is amazing. They've just really helped us um, put this all together and we are so grateful to you guys. What an amazing team. Um, and our Sun Mentors, we had today with us, there's a whole team. Um, today we had Latoya, Tommy, Chaya, and Christian. So again, thank you to our Sun team. Um, we have the evaluation. Please fill it out to receive your CEU credits. 
every session you will receive CEU credits. Um, this is also a certificate of attendance. It proves that you are at this training. So please fill out the form is in the chat. Um, if you click on that, it'll direct you right to right to the C, uh, to the eval for the CEU credit. And we have some upcoming trainings and, and this is great to, to network with your doctors. Please make sure to tell them May 21st, there is X waiver training for your physicians, your MPs, your PAs. Um, please, please pass this information on. It is on the website. And yes, um, Eric's asking, is this X waiver free? Yes, the physicians get free X waiver training. So please pass this on to your organization. Very, very important. We're offering free training. Um, our other training is for nursing. You can make some nursing friends. And this is Innovations in Nursing, Transforming Substance Use Disorder Treatment. And it's the best practices in nursing management of opioid use disorder and acute withdrawal. That's coming Tuesday, May 25th. So definitely um, pass these on. We are really looking forward to, um, to having you attend. And our next SUN training will be May 27th. So these um, other um, things will be before us, but we will see you next month, May 27th. Our session will be called Connecting Patients to Ongoing Care. So it's really about those networking and resources, right? And always, always, if you um, have any questions, and again, we'll be here. We enter, we finished a few minutes early. Um, so we'll be here if you guys have any questions and our Sun mentors are on the chat, um, but we're always here to help. We are, you guys. So if there's any question, the last thing I wanna leave you is with Slack. If you are not on Slack, please get on Slack. Um, that is our number one communication tool. And you can pose, you know, I get a lot of questions about, is there a sun here? Is there a sun there? Um, if you put it on the chat, on the Slack channel, all suns, they will respond, okay? Um, we want the, the Slack, you can look up their name um, and it will have their name and their, their hospital. But even if you just pose that question, we want everybody to go to Slack. So really, really important um, to, to follow up with that. Um, somebody asked, how do we get onto Slack? Tammy, we will invite you. We'll send you a, a an invite. Um, if we don't have you down listed at your facility, please email me. You can email me at ssneros at californiabridge.org or sun at californiabridge.org. Just send me an email about what hospital you're from. And um, I think Latoya just said, drop your name email and they will, will, will follow up. But um, Slack is our number one go-to communication. Um, you don't have to have an app. It can be on your desktop. Um, some of our sons are at work and they can't use your cell phone. We understand that. So please definitely um, be on Slack. And this is for our substance use navigators in the hospital. Um, and we're, there's another question. You were, can these recordings be found for future sun hires? They are all on our californiabridge.org. Everything um, is recorded and you can go back to previous sessions. Again, this is our third. We've had two all um, on there. Sessions one through three will be on there. Any other questions? Keep them coming, you guys. Like I said, we have some mentors here. Um, when is the Matt X? Is it, do you mean the X waiver? The X waiver is May 21st and everything can be found on our californiabridge.org tr under training. Everything is there. You can access the website 24 hours. Um, you can get the registration links. Everything is there on our website. So I highly encourage you to go to our website um, and go to training. If you click on training, that is where everything can be found. So it's very, very important. Um, those two things as sons are our website and our Slack channel. Um, the Slack Sun landing page. Yes, it's in the chat. Um, and that's a great resource as well. 
definitely you can use the sun landing page. We um, debuted that last, last training. So thank you for reminding us. Any other questions? We're here until 12, so please keep them coming. This is great. I'm glad we had some time. Um, we're, we normally are so action packed, so this is great. We have Robert, um, Sierra County, Stephanie Plake, Adventist Health Bakersfield. Um, so we will get the information to you, definitely. Um, Sky put in our, our trainings. It's a very important so I just left that up because that's what everybody keeps commenting on is our ex waiver training and our docs would really appreciate you'll gain friends um, if you if you pass that out for our docs um, very important if you don't have an ex waiver doc at your hospital um, that's crucial for your program it's a lot easier to have your doctor give them a week or two week prescription it kind of takes the stress off of you to find them treatment in a day or two when you can find them specifically, um, you know, you can have up to two weeks. Um, most doctors will give that um, buprenorphine prescription up to two weeks. Okay, Stacy Clark at Saddleback, definitely we, we can give you that information. Any other questions? Well, this has been really wonderful, you guys. Um, we hope, you know, every month we continue to get, um, give out more information. Please fill out your evaluation and let us know definitely if there's something we need to, to look into, especially and share with you at these trainings. Um, we try to make them very useful um, as well as, you know, not so formal. We want that action back and forth, back and forth, um, because it's crucial. If you're not getting something, um, put it on Slack, ask a question. We also have technical TA time, support time, Thursdays. Forgot to mention that. Thursdays at 2.33, our Sun Mentors are available for questions for an immediate response. Um, we're on Slack all the time, but if you really want something and you want, want to know it immediately, our Sun Mentors are monitoring 2.30 to 3, 2 3 o'clock on Thursdays. So today we do have TA support time on Slack and we put out an announcement to make sure. All right, if there's any other questions. And you guys are welcome, you're great. We're so excited to have you here. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Each one of our trainings, we get more and more people and we're really um, glad to share all of this information with you. Thank you so much for coming.